all right, Nate, I found a program that's going to help you out, uh, but I'm going to have to give you a little tutorial on how to use it. So once you get the file and download it to uh, a folder on your computer, it could be anywhere. I'm putting it in C temp, but you can put it anywhere. Um, double click on it, and it's going to ask you where you want to extract it. Just pick your folder and then click extract, and it'll do everything. Okay. So once it's extracted, you can see that there's a folder here called Portable Fast Stone Image Viewer. So this program is technically an image viewer, but it's going to do what you want. Double click on the folder to open it, and you're going to find this file called FS Viewer, and it should be the one that's the application file. Okay. Double click on it to open it up, and it will go ahead and show you the contents of the directory that you're in you can navigate to any directory on your computer where your your pictures are so here's my example one and these are just a bunch of photos I took from Italy when I went there last year so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up so here are all of my pictures okay so let's say some of these are uh, projects that you've done okay so let's say you want to select these files right here and you want to rename them Okay. So the way I did that was I selected the first one, I hold down the shift key, and then I click the last one, and you can see that I selected the whole bunch of them. If you wanted to select just a couple, then click one, hold down the control key, and pick the one you want manually. So you can see here that it selects this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, but they're not in a row. Okay, Does that make sense? Anyways, once you have the files that you want selected, then you just right click on any one of them that's selected and you get this menu that comes up go to tools and then select batch rename okay it's gonna give you this dialog box it looks like there's a lot of options but there really isn't um, let's say that this is a project that uh, you did for a guy named Joe Smith so maybe you want to call it project underscore Joe underscore Smith and then you want to add like a number at the end. So let's put uh, a dash and then uh, four number signs. One, two, three, four. Okay. These four number signs right here, the program, it's special to the program. So it's automatically going to take this and just count it up automatically. And you can pick the number you want to start from. So in this case, I just want to start at one. So that's fine. I click rename. It's going to ask me if I want to rename the file. I say yes. Once it's done, you click Done. And uh, if you go down and look at the project name, you can see it right here. Project Joe Smith 001. 0, 0, 0, 0, 002, 3, 4, 5, 6. Automatically. Okay. Let's say you have uh, uh, another couple of pictures from a different project. Then you can select them. Let's say these uh, five right here. Just like before, select all five. Right click, Tools, Batch Rename. And let's say this time I want to call it with the address. So maybe I say Project Joe Smith, uh, no, I'm sorry, Project, and then I say 100 uh, Main Street. Okay, could be the name of the business, could be anything. And then dash, and let's say this time instead of using four digits for the, the end, I'm just going to use two. Then you only have to have two number signs. See that? And then let's say this time I want to start it with uh, five. Click rename as before, say yes, it'll do its thing, and done. Okay, if I scroll down, and I should see that there is these files are all in alphabetical order, but you can see it project 100 main smith, and it starts at five. So it starts five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so once you you rename all the files, okay, get rid of this. Once you uh, rename all the files, and now you want to put the image, the, the text on the picture itself. Okay, so right now there's there's no text here. Okay, now we go to step two. So go ahead and pick all of the files that you've renamed. So like this, and then this time do the same thing. Right click, tools. Except this time you're going to select batch convert instead of batch rename. Okay. Once you click Batch Convert, you're going to get this dialog box. Looks pretty similar to the last one. Um, make sure that you uncheck this output folder. Okay. And you can see the warning here. It says not specified.
files we save in the original folder. That's fine for this demo purpose, but if you want to put it to a different file, you can. I'll show you that later. But for now, I'm not going to do it. Um, uncheck the box that says rename if it's checked, but make sure you check this one, use advanced option. And then click on the advanced option. And on the advanced option, you have a bunch of things you can do with it. I mean, you can resize it, you can rotate it, you can do a bunch of stuff, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so make sure that none of these other things are checked. The only thing that should be checked is text. Okay, so make sure that add text is uh, checked. Okay, and uh, the program allows you to do a lot of things, it's pretty flexible. So, like if you want to just say Nate on every file, okay. You can, but that's kind of silly to have it say Nate at the bottom of every file. So the program gives you an option to, to insert what's called a variable. So let me go ahead and delete this. Okay, so I don't want that text. So I'm going to go insert a variable, and there's a lot of options, but you're probably going to choose file name. And uh, I'm going to choose the one that's the second option, file name without extension. So I click that. And don't worry about this special text here, okay? This is just a placeholder. But to the program, this thing means file name without extension, okay? Then you can select the font you want to use. Pick any font you want that's on your system. Pick the size. You can even change the, the color and, and what have you. I'm going to leave it white because I think white's going to work on most of these uh, dark background image, okay? Um, the last thing you may want to do is just pick a position. So let's say you want it on the top left. Select top left, top center, center of the image, okay, bottom center. You get the idea. So I think bottom center looks pretty good. I'm gonna click OK, and uh, now I'm done. I can click convert. Okay, now because I did not check to put it into a different folder, it's gonna give me this dialog box. It says save in the original folder. Do I want to do that? And in this case, I do. So I'm just going to click yes to all. If you click just yes, it's going to ask you for every image. Okay. And since we selected like, I don't know, 15 or 18 of them, you're going to have to click like yes 18 times. So I'm just going to say yes to all. And it's going to go and do its thing. When it's done, click the done button and check it out. Now the image has the name of the file on it. Okay, and now you can print it from from any program, and it'll have that text on. Um, this program allows you to print it too. So if you want to print this, go ahead and select you know whatever file you want to print. You can do one or you can do multiple. So let's do a bunch of them. Right click again. Okay, choose print, and then it gives you all the options. Okay, you select your printer. You can say center on the page. Put it on the top left top right, whatever. Um, you can tell it to fit to the page. You can print it normal. Um, you can print it to uh, stretch to the page. You can specify a certain size. Okay, so here's your page preview and you can just do whatever. So I'm just gonna say say fit to page. Okay? And you can see already that it's the picture with the text on it. And then you would click print and it'll go to your printer. Okay, does that make sense? All right, let me uh, do the auto text thing again, just so you can see how that went. Um, so let's pick a bunch of different files. So let's pick these four right here. Right click, tools, batch convert. This time I will change where the files go when they're done. So I will check this output folder. And I'm going to browse to uh, the folder I want to put it in. So I'm just going to browse to my computer, C, and then temp, and click OK. okay. If you know the folder path, you can also just type it. You can just type C slash temp, and that's fine too. Advanced options. Make sure nothing is checked except text. Make sure that it's added here, add text. Um, insert a variable, file name, without extension. Okay. So you see how when I did that again, it added this little weird text twice. I only need one of them, so I'm just going to delete, delete the other one. Okay. Check your position, check your font, and uh, click OK, and then click Convert. 
Now this time I shouldn't get that message that says, hey, you want to overwrite or anything, because I'm putting it into a whole new folder. Click convert, it does its thing, I say done. Okay. Now, because I put it to a different folder, if you look at these pictures, they don't have the text there. See that? No text. Okay. But if I go to my C temp folder up here, hey, look at that. It's the picture, and it has the uh, file name on it. See that? That's all there is to it. All right, man. If you have any questions, uh, give me a call, but I think this video is going to help you. Uh, figure it out, and this uh, this image viewer is actually a pretty neat file to program too. I mean, it's small, and it does a pretty good job. You know, if you're view if you're viewing a bunch of images, and you have one up in the full screen view, you can just use your mouse wheel to scroll forward and backwards. Okay, and when you're viewing it in full screen, you also have this magnifying glass cursor. So, like, if you want to zoom into something, you just click in it, and it zooms in for you. See that? It's pretty cool. Um, play with it. It's a free program, so do whatever you want. If you have questions, man, give me a call. Thanks, dude. Bye.